I shall come forth as pure gold. Have you been tried in the fire? Have you been tried in the fire? Well, tell me, did you come through as pure gold? Come on in, people of God. Come on in. You are welcome. You are welcome. Listen to the song as you come in. Did you come through the fire as pure gold? Let's give it a few more minutes as we wait for some intercessors to join us. Come in, people of God. I'm just giving it a few minutes before I go into the word of the Lord this evening. Lord bless you. Keep praising God as you come in, as you listen to this song. Have you been tried in the fire? Thank you for the prayers, woman of God. Have you been tried in the fire? Have you been tried in the fire? Yes, yes, yes. Just one more minute. I know I got religion. I belong to the noisy crew. <laughs> you see, we shout when we get happy. That's the way we Christians do. Oh, have you been tried in the fire? Have you been tried in the fire, people of God? Keep posting, keep posting. Yes, I've been tried in the fire. Yes, I've been tried in the fire. Come on in. Come on in, intercessors. Watchmen, see us. Come on in. Did you 
Did you come through? Did you come through? Did you come through? Are you living right? Are you giving right? Are you walking right? How Such a deep song. Are you talking right? Are you singing right? Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise his holy name, family of God. Keep praising the Lord as we get ready to uh, share the word of the Lord with you tonight. Hallelujah. Let's just get something uh, a little softer, a little slower, that we can uh, go into our time uh, of prophetic word and uh, prophecy this evening. Keep praising the Lord, family of God. Keep praising the Lord as you come in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, people of God, to Awaken the Nations broadcast. I am Anna Edwards, founder of the Prayer Tower, president of the International School of Intercession and team leader of the Network of Intercessors and Seers. I welcome you, I welcome everyone tonight, all of my family from across the nations of the world, all of our prayer towers throughout the nations. I greet you and I welcome you. Costa Rica, you are welcome. Uh, Panama, you are welcome. Nigeria, you are welcome. Bahamas, you are welcome. St. Martin, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Philippines, you are welcome. To my overseer, Rabbi Daniel Jesseran Vargas, we love you, my Father in the Lord. We love you. We appreciate you. And to all of my pastors and ministers, intercessors, watchmen, seers that are lifting up my hand in the work, in the vineyard, I love you. The Lord bless you. You are welcome this evening. So we're getting ready to go into the word of the Lord, and I've got something to say uh, to the people of God tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our topic tonight, the reaper angels are in the fields and they are bundling wheat for the barns and tears for the burning. Hallelujah. Mighty God, we just thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, God, that in our own strength we are nothing. As a humble handmaiden of the Lord, I am your daughter. I am your vessel. Now you use me, Lord, to speak the word of the Lord, to encourage and to exhort the churches and your precious people of the nations of the world. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Family of God, Romans chapter 13. Hallelujah. And verse 11 tells us, and knowing that the time, it is now high time to awaken out of sleep. For now our salvation has drawn nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk with the armor of light. Family of God, we are living in the last days. We are living in, this, in the time and in the season right before Jesus Christ returns. The signs are all around us. The watchmen are sounding the alarms and they continue to sound the alarms. Yet many people 
are still sleeping. I was in my prayer room, in my place of prayer, people of God. And the Lord began to place a burden on my heart concerning the, the state of the church and concerning the nations of the world. That men and women are sleeping. They are sleeping on the walls of prayer. They are sleeping in their churches. They are sleeping in their families. They are sleeping and the enemy is coming in and reaping havoc among our families, our churches, our nation. Family of God, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me like you have never heard me before. Tonight, I'm just, my job is simple. Three spirits, three demonic powers. The Lord showed me that it's infiltrating the church of the Caribbean more than ever in this last day. Three spirits, three demonic powers. Let me read something for you, family of God, from Ephesians. I want you to understand. Ephesians 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the blessed spirit of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Tonight the Lord is calling his church to wake up, to wake up and to understand that we're living in a time, we're living in an hour where Satan has begun to infiltrate the very fabric of our ministries, the very fabric of our family life, family of God. We've got to open our eyes. We've got to open our eyes. We have come this close. We have come this close to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we've got to wake up. We've got to wake up now. We've got to wake up now, family. Family of God, the time has far been far spent. And now we've got to ensure that we are wearing the full armor of God. We have come to a place now where we have to make a decision. You see, I have just came on here tonight with the word of the Lord. I did not come to excite, to excite you and all of that. Yes, there are many other prayer rooms I do. And if you are looking for a word, the word is right here tonight. I've got a word from the Lord just for you. You did not come into this prayer room by accident. You came into this prayer room by divine appointment. Now straighten up, buckle your belt, and listen to the word of the Lord. Listen like you have never listened before because your soul depends on it. The souls of your sons and daughters depends on it. Listen, listen, not with only your physical ears, beloved. Listen with your spiritual ears. For we are in the last days. We are in the last hour. And the time has come for the church to begin to endure sound doctrine sound doctrine you need sound doctrine in your spirit you need sound doctrine a doctrine that will sober you up to the reality to the truth of God's word sound doctrine and so I wrote some points here for you hallelujah glory to God let me give you some points this evening hallelujah keep praising the Lord keep praying family of God keep praying you got to pray. You must pray. You got to wear the full armor of God. You got to ensure that you have on the full armor of God, family. You cannot be a soldier in the army of God and walking around and you're missing breastplate. You're missing the belt of truth. You are missing your helmet. 
you are missing, some people are missing shields, some people are missing swords. You are in the army of the Lord and God is depending on you. He is building an army all across the nations of the world. And every soldier got to take stock now. Every soldier got to come into place and come into position and come into rank and begin to operate as a soldier in the Lord's army. You cannot be a wandering soldier, family of God. Satan loves wandering soldiers. He loves lone rangers. You cannot be a lone ranger in this final hour and in this last day. You've got to get yourself into a local church and you've got to connect with a body of praying believers. You've got to be in a praying church. I cannot stress that enough. You've got to lock shields in a praying church. Praying church is a powerful church. A praying church is a church that is filled with fire. A praying church is a church that cannot be defeated by the tricks of the enemy. A prayerless church, on the other hand, is a, is a church that lacks power. And so you've got to be a praying people and you've got to find yourself in a praying church. Family of God, I want to tell you something. We are five months away from uh, the year 2020. And the Lord spoke something into my spirit concerning the year 2020. I'm going to share it with you now. 2020 is one of the most impacting years for the church. It is a year of double harvest for the people that have been sowing into the fields of humanity double harvest double harvest family double harvest I want you to hear me 2020 the Lord's great end time harvest is right and God is releasing supernatural sickles into the hands of his end time harvesters the Lord would say to his church and to his people on tonight I must have a people that walk circumspectly I must have a people that walk in soberness of mind I must have a people that walk in strength of character I must have a people that understand the harvest and the process for harvesting come on do I got any soldiers in the house do I got any end time harvesters in the house tonight? I must have a people that will hear my voice and trust in the sickle to reap the last great harvest of souls. 2020, family of God, 2020, it is a year of double harvest. The end time church, the last days church, the people of God, the end time pastors, the pastors that are truly watching and praying, the men and women of God. These are the ones that are going to be hearing the voice of God concerning the last great harvest. The next five months, hear me well, the next five months in this year, 2019, it is five months of significant preparation. We have got to get ourselves ready for the great harvest is at hand. Five months. You've got five months, pastors. Ministers, you've got five months. August, September, October, November, December, You've got five months to put your house in order. You've got five months to make yourselves ready. You've got five months to pray and to repent of every evil and every iniquity that have been holding you back. You've got five months. You've got five months, pastors. Man of God, you've got five months. Five months. Five months. You've got five months to put your house in order, said the Lord. You've got five months. Hear me like you have never heard another preacher tonight. 
You've got five months to put your house in order. The Lord would say to you, for the pastors that are viewing, you know what the iniquity is in your ministries, in your families. You know it. You are sensing it. You have been living it. But the Lord is saying, I'm talking to shepherds tonight. The Lord is saying that I need you for my end time harvest. And I need you in an uncontaminated state. For as you are right now, you are still carrying contamination. You have five months to purge yourself. Five months to purify yourself. Five months to make yourself clean and ready to be used as an end time harvester in the Lord's great harvest of souls. Listen, I don't mean no harm to anyone tonight but i want you to hear the heart of the father more than anything that you have ever heard before you see sometimes we play too much games sometimes we sugarcoat the words of the lord too much sometimes we we pamper mature people for too long we pamper them and we cover them up in all their mess and, and all we give is grace 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 Yes, I believe in the grace of God. Yes, I teach the grace of God. But grace without truth is deception, family. And so I release the grace. And I, I release and I pray for grace. But I also release the truth. The truth of God is what will set you free. Know the truth. Apply the truth. And you shall be set free. Knowing the truth is not enough. The Bible says, even the devils know Jesus and tremble. They know him. They know him. They know the word. They know the scriptures. They know everything about Christian life. Even the devils know God and tremble. Knowing the truth is not enough. You've got to know the truth. And you've got to apply the truth. It says twofold. The truth that you know and you apply will change your life. And it will change your life forever. Hallelujah. Family of God, this is Awaken the Nations. And tonight we're talking about the Lord's harvest, the last great harvest of souls. So let me get to the harvest. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you the demonic powers that are assigned against the church in just a little while. But let me talk to you tonight just a little bit about the Lord's harvest. Hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep praying, family of God. Keep praying. Those of you that are writing, you can keep writing. Share this broadcast. Invite someone to, to uh, tune in to hear the word of the Lord for the last days. Hallelujah. This word is a word for a mature people and a mature church. People that understand the mandate of souls. People that understand the mandate of heaven in this last hour. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Revelation 14 and 15, family, and this is what it says. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Trust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Family of God, we have arrived at this point in time. We have arrived at this scripture. The harvest of the earth is ripe. If you're viewing this broadcast right now, I want you to begin to declare that the harvest of the earth is ripe. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Begin to connect. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Begin to connect. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Begin to connect. Begin to connect. The harvest of the earth is ripe. Hallelujah. The harvest of the earth is ripe, family of God. I've got some notes here for you concerning the harvest. Every end time harvester knows what season they have arrived at. And God is preparing his end time harvesters for the reaping of the great harvest of souls. 
The Bible says to everything there is a time and there is a season. There is a time to plant and there is a time to pluck up that which has been planted. Family of God, we have arrived at the junction where it is time to reap the harvest of souls. I have some more truth for you, but I'm just sharing with you concerning the harvest. The angels are out in the field and they are bundling. They are bundling wheat for the barns and they are bundling tears for the burning. What is harvesting? Harvesting is the process of gathering a ripe crop from the field. I'm giving you some foundation now. Reaping is the cutting of grain or pulp for the harvest. The tool used to reap the harvest is called a sickle. In this last hour, God is releasing supernatural sickles into the hands of his end time harvesters. Within the next five months, God will be promoting end time harvesters. But he will also be demoting harvesters who have been called and have failed their test. If you know, family, if you know, hear the sound of my voice. If you know that you have been called to reap the last day's harvest of souls, then you better get it right. You've got to put your house in order and ensure that you are living right. Because God is not playing games and he's not playing with his last day's harvest. I'm going to teach you now about two kinds of harvest. Because in this last hour, we are going to see two kinds of harvesters arising out of the church. Two kinds of harvesters. There is one, number one, the end time harvester that is assigned to reap the wheat. The end time harvesters that are assigned to reap the wheat bundles are working with the reaper angels assigned to reap the wheat. The wheat harvest is the harvest that belongs to the Lord. The harvest of sons and daughters that have been truly converted. True converts, family of God. We're not talking false converts true converts. The second harvester that you will begin to see rise in this last hour is the harvester that is assigned to bundle the harvest of tears. This is um, men and women who belong to the church and are gathering, gathering souls into buildings but have no sanctification. They're gathering souls into churches, but they have no salt. There is no conviction of sin. There is no correction of error. There is no discipling of the saints of God. Two kinds of harvesters. You say, well, apostle, what are you saying? I'm telling you about two kinds of end time harvesters that represents two kinds of church, two kinds of churches in this last hour. The church of wheat that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. True converts, true sons and daughters of God. And the church of tears. False converts, false, false prophets, false apostles, false teachers, People just running around in the Lord's house having a good old time. Everybody just doing what they want and having a religious experience. Two kinds of church. So in this last hour, what are you going to see? Two kinds of churches. The church of wheat, the Lord's church, and the church of tears. Now listen family, I know, not, I know everyone cannot accept this kind of message. I know everyone cannot um, embrace this kind of message. And God forbid, I wish it were not so. I really wish it were not so, but it is the truth family of God. 
If you belong to a church and you believe that everybody in the church is going to be saved at the sounding of the trumpet and on the Lord's day when he returns, God forbid. Two kinds of churches. The church of wheat and the church of tears. The question now, family, what church do you belong to? Are you a wheat or are you a tear? You've got to answer that question for yourself. No man can answer that question for you. It is only you. It is only you, family of God, that can answer that question. Two kinds of harvest. Let's go quickly to the, to the teaching because I need to get to the prophetic word concerning three demonic powers that the Lord showed to me are coming. Three demonic powers. Two kinds of harvest. The fullness of one's harvest is depicted by the ingathering of men and women. Once harvesting season comes, it is evidenced by two kinds of bundles. Bundle number one, the bundles of tears. T-A-R-E-S. Bundle number two, the harvest of wheat. Let me read that for you, family of God, because I know some of you all some of you all are getting upset in your spirit and you cannot accept the word of the Lord because it's too heavy. That's all right. May grace come upon you. May your spirits be open. May your eyes be open. May your heart be open to understand what is happening in this last hour. Two kinds of churches, family. The church of wheat and the church of tear. Two kinds, two kinds. You got to get it right. You got to understand. Not everyone that is in the church is, is, is really holy and sanctified and seeking the Lord. Many people are just having a religious experience with no sanctification, no conviction of sin. They can sin Saturday night and jump in a pulpit Sunday morning. No conviction of sin. No conviction. No fear of the Lord. The fear of God has gone through the window, family of God. And so what are we doing? The church of tears, they are collecting bodies. They are collecting bodies, family of God. They are collecting bodies for the burning, for Satan's pleasure. Let me give you scripture for this. I'm going to give you scripture for this, family, concerning the two bundles. Hallelujah. Matthew 13 and 25. Let's see. Let's get to the word of God. Don't take my word for it, family of God. I'm a word woman. I stand on the word. Listen to what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Scripture, scripture. Matthew 13, 29. But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tears and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Family of God, it's in the word, it's in the books, it's in the books. The angels are in the field and they are gathering tears for the burning. They are gathering, they are gathering. There, there are churches of tears where they, the, the man, the, the, the false pastor, the false shepherd, their job is to gather unconverted, rebellious people and gather them into buildings they are collecting bodies for satan's burning i know you don't want to hear this kind of word but you've got to listen you got to wake up now and listen and understand that we are in the last days. You say, well, Apostle, the grace of God can save and the grace of God can do this and do that. Yeah, we know all of that. We understand all of that, but the grace has to flow from the shepherd, from the head down. It has to flow. And so there are two bundles, family of God, two bundles, two bundles. May the grace of God come upon you to be in the bundle of wheat. May the grace of God be upon you this day to remain planted in your local church, that you will not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. 
May you be found in the bundle of wheat. In the name of Jesus. The bundle of tears. They are bundling tears. They are bundling tears. Let me give you the word again, family of God. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tears and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Family of God, the reaper angels, they are in the field. They are bundling tears for the burning and they are bundling wheat for the barns. We are in the last days. And Satan has intensified his warfare against the church. He has intensified his warfare against the people of God. That's why, family of God, I always endorse praying for your pastors, having a specific prayer time for your pastors, for your shepherds. It's so important more than ever to pray for your pastors, pray for your leaders, because the Bible says if you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. And so you got to pray. You got to pray. You must pray, family of God. You must, you must, you must. I cannot say it enough. You must pray for your leaders. We are in the last days, family of God. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Understand the, the heart of the Lord tonight. If it's daytime by you, understand the heart of the Lord, family of God. Two kinds of harvest. Two kinds of harvest. The harvest of tears and the harvest of wheat. Do you know something, family of God? Many people, the churches that are truly living right and endorsing right living and uh, discipling their sons and daughters and really trying um, to raise up their, their people in the right way, do you know something? Many times, the true church is attacked by people outside. They attack the true churches. They attack the true pastors. They attack the true prophets of God by saying, well, they are too holy. They are trying to be too uh, straightforward. They are trying to do things too, too right. They are trying to um, be all churchy. They are too churchy. Many times you would hear things like people saying, well, that church is too churchy, but I'd rather be too, too churchy and, and, and living right than to be worldly and having a religious experience with no sanctification in my spirit, no conviction of sin, just having a religious experience. Family of God, may grace come upon you tonight to hear the word of the Lord. May grace come upon you tonight to hear what the Lord is saying to his churches. This is Awake on the Nations broadcast. And this is, this is the word of the Lord that the church needs in this last hour. Two kinds of harvest. The Lord in this hour is sending out his reaper angels into the churches of the nations. The reaper angels are now in the process of bundling. They are bundling the tears. They are bundling those that are yoked with sin and refuse to repent. They are bundling men and women of God that are living double lives. They are bundling. They are bundling the tears for the burning. They are also bundling the wheat harvest of the Lord. Sons and daughters that are living in the fear of God. By the grace of God, walking uprightly before the Lord and looking and longing for his return. Family, the reaper angels, the reaper angels, the reaper angels are in the field. The reaper angels are in the field. The reaper angels are in the field. I want you to write that. I want you to write that because I need that to get into your spirit. The reaper angels are in the field. 
The Reaper angels are in the field. I'm not here to make friends with anybody, family of God. I am the Lord's handmaiden, an apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to speak the word of the Lord that he has placed on my heart. And I know that this word is going to help someone. I know that this word is going to wake up someone and bring someone into soberness of mind and soberness of heart. To, con to, to continue to do the work of the Lord in righteousness and holiness. Righteousness has never gone through the window. Holiness has never gone through the window. The word of the Lord said, be ye holy as God is holy. It has never gone through the window, family of God. It is we, the body of Christ, that have dropped our standards. But God is saying, raise your standard. Raise your standard, not against your own self or against your own opinions. Raise your standard and measure it against the word of God. God. For the word of God is truth. The word of God is light. The word of God is power. The word of God will cause you to live right and under the fear of God. Measure yourself against the word of God, family. Measure yourself against the word of God. Never measure yourself against another man, another woman of God, a son or daughter. It could be an error. You measure yourself against the word of God. Serve faithfully. You're in a local church, serve faithfully. We stand and we lift up the hands of our local pastors in our nation. Pastors are facing great attack. Bishops are facing great attack. Men and women of God are facing great attack. And so you've got to pray. You got to pray, family of God. We got to pray more than ever for our nation's churches and pastors. They are needed. You don't stay at home on a Sunday and say, well, I'm going to serve the Lord at home all by myself. No, family, you cannot do that. You need to get to your local house. Get to your local church. As long as you know it is a true church of God, get to the local church. And join with the intercessors. Get into a department and serve the Lord faithfully, family of God. Serve the Lord with gladness and with the joy of the Lord in your heart. And on the day of reward, you will be rewarded by the Lord for serving in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're still talking about the Lord's harvest. The Lord's harvest, family of God. The Lord's harvest. So much evil is in the world today. But the power of Jesus Christ will break every power of darkness. Every power of darkness will be broken and will be destroyed by the power of Jesus Christ. But you've got to be wearing the full armor of God. Family of God, I know some men of God and oh my gosh, it's, it's just so sad. I know some people of God that lie for no reason. J just lie. Their fruit alone tells me that something is wrong. How could you be a man of God and just lying for no reason? Family of God, Satan is the father of lies. And so may every person that is having the spirit of lying upon them, may they be delivered tonight by the power of Jesus Christ. May you be delivered from lying in the name of Jesus. May your tongue speak as an oracle of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And may truth be upon your life in the name of Jesus. To speak in righteousness and holiness. All right, family of God. Second part in this uh, program, I've got the word of the Lord. Three spirits that are assigned to attack the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just have a few minutes with you tonight. Three spirits that are assigned to attack the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan's strategy has increased against the church family of God. He has intensified his warfare. And if you and I don't open our eyes and walk in the light of God, we will be taken out by these spirits these evil spirits now now mind you Luke 10 and 19 beloved I give you all power over all the powers of the enemy to trample upon snakes and scorpions that by no means they shall hurt you that is the promise of God and that is the promise to you and to me 
But the word of God also says, do not be uh, ignorant of Satan's devices. And so the spirits that are assigned tonight as I lay on my bed, um, and the Lord began to speak into my heart and said, Anna, I want you to speak about this. These are the three spirits tonight. Number one, it is the spirit of lukewarmness. The spirit of lukewarmness. And I want you to understand what is lukewarmness. I went to research what is the meaning of lukewarmness. I want you to listen, family. Lukewarmness. Someone who claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ rarely comes to church, dabbles in a sinful life, a false convert. Ha! Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. Dabbles in a sinful life, comes to church hardly ever, but professes to be a follower of Jesus Christ. A false convert. Let me give you scripture for that family of God. If you are a witch and you are looking at this program, you will be delivered tonight. If you are under the spirit of lukewarmness, you are going to be delivered tonight, family. Don't touch that dial. Don't go anywhere. You are going to be delivered tonight. Revelation 3. Let's go to the word of God. Let's see what God says in Revelation 3. Lukewarm, lukewarm, lukewarm. The spirit of lukewarmness have come over the body of Christ. I thank God for the good men and women of God that are praying and that are really fasting and really standing in the gap for their nation. The Lord bless you. May our eyes be open to understand truth tonight. Revelation 3 and 16. Let's read from verse 15. Revelation 3, verse 15 and 16. Hear the word of the Lord. I know your works that you are neither cold or hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm, you are neither cold, neither hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. This is Jesus talking to the end time church. And the Lord says to tell you, if you are under the spirit of lukewarmness, it is time to repent. It is time to repent, family. It is time to repent. You cannot be lukewarm in this last hour. You cannot afford to walk around and be lukewarm and be self-righteous. You can't. You can't. You cannot afford to be coming to church and putting on a show, putting on a charade, and then in the privacy of your home and your family, you become someone else. No family, lukewarmness. It's a spirit. It's a spirit of lukewarmness. And the, the word of God says, Jesus himself said, because you are neither hot and because you are neither cold, I'm going to spit you out. Oh Lord, help us tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, mighty God. May every spirit of lukewarmness be cast out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May you de be delivered from every spirit of lukewarmness. May every spirit of lukewarmness that has taken your mind be dismantled in the name of Jesus. It is time to repent. It is time to repent, family of God. You've got to stop playing games with God now. You've got to live right. You cannot be lukewarm. We are in an hour and a time where today you see someone alive and tomorrow they drop down dead. You got to repent. You got to repent. It's time to repent. The spirit of lukewarmness. It's creeping into churches. It's creeping into choirs. It's creeping into our worshipers. We've got worshipers singing, singing on a Sunday morning and then during the week they're living all sorts of wretched life. May you repent. Family of God, we got to repent. Let me tell you something. For those of you that are feeling upset in your spirit, when a preacher says to repent, it's the greatest message of love that you could ever hear. Because there are thousands.
thousands and thousands of souls in hell wishing that someone would have preached the truth to them wishing that someone would have said to them repent from your lukewarmness thousands millions of souls are in hell wishing that someone would have had enough grace and faith on their life to tell them to repent lukewarmness lukewarmness Walking around, pretending to be a follower, playing all the music, or playing all the church music, playing all the all the sanak, you know, you're playing it, you're listening all the sanak, listening all the um, worship and all those other songs that they play. You're listening everything, singing, dancing, having a good time, but yet still, yet still. Your heart has not been converted. Family of God, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Make it right with the Lord. Make it right before it's too late. Make it right before it's too late, family. The second spirit. The second spirit that have entered into our nation's churches, family. Hear me and hear me well. It's the spirit of religiousness. It's a religious spirit. Do you not know that even Jesus rebuked the religious people of his time? The religious Pharisees and scribes. They wore all the right garments. They wore all, um, they had all the right words. They had all the right um, outward outward appearances everything looked right and sounded right yet there was a spirit of religiousness on them and Jesus when he walked the earth he said to them you are blind and you are hypocrites this is what Jesus said to the most religious people of, of his time. He said, you are blind and you are hypocrites because you prefer to clean the outside of the glass and the inside of the cup is filthy. family of God I can tell someone is getting angry at me right now I can tell someone's spirit is turning inside of their bellies right now may the fire of God burn out every religious spirit out of you may the fire of God burn out every blindness out of your mind and your eyes may see in the name of Jesus family of God religiousness will save no man Religiousness will save none of us. I could be try to be how religious. I could be one of the most religious people in the whole of Trinidad and Tobago. Because I love the things of the Lord. I love um, being in the house of the Lord, being in the temple of the Lord. I love having the holy oils and applying holy oils upon my, my face and all of that. But I, if I am not living right, family... And I myself would be a hypocrite and good to cast away. Family of God, the Lord is saying tonight, don't worry too much about the outside of your cup. Clean the inside. Clean the inside. Make sure that your life is right to meet your maker. That if you die tonight, you would see the face of God. Make sure that your heart is right before the Lord. Make sure that you're not living in an unrepented place. Make sure that there is no bitterness in your heart, no malice, no, no confusion, no wicked way be found in you. Oh, Lord, help us tonight. Father, may we repent, Lord. We repent, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hear our cry tonight, Lord. 
hear the cry of your church tonight, Lord, we repent. We repent of every evil way and every wicked way. I repent on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago. I repent on behalf of the churches of the nations of the world. I repent, God, from every spirit of religiousness. And we put on the righteousness of God. May the righteousness of God come upon us tonight. May the righteousness of God come upon us tonight. For religiousness cannot save any man. Beloved, religiousness cannot save any man. Religious works cannot save any man. We can give our bodies to be burned for the poor and it will not save any man. Religious works cannot save us. Preaching in the pulpits cannot save us. Working on miracles cannot save us. Healing the sick cannot save us. The only thing that can save us is a pure and a contrite heart before the Lord. May the Lord hear the cry of our spirits this evening. Family of God, the spirit of religiousness has got to be rebuked out of the church. I want when you are praying in your prayer time that you begin to rebuke these spirits out of your life, out of your family life, out of your ministry. I've got a lot of pastors that are on um, the prayer room with me tonight. So I'm talking to a lot of pastors, a lot of ministries that I oversee. I'm talking to a lot. I'm talking to myself first and to every person that is listening. Family of God, may we be delivered from a spirit of religiousness. For we cannot be saved by religiousness. The Pharisees and the scribes, Jesus said to them that they were the biggest hypocrites of their time. I want to give you scripture. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's go there. Let me give you that portion of scripture at this time. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. Those of you that are watching the replay, may the grace of God come upon you to live right. May the grace of God come upon you to be an end time harvester. May the grace of God come upon you to walk uprightly before the Lord and to hear the voice of God this morning, this evening, tonight, wherever you are. May grace come upon you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. The spirit of religiousness. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof, from such turn away. From such turn away. From such turn away. Having a form of godliness. A form, a form of godliness. Fashioned. A religious fashion, you're in it. A religious form. Uh, word or twang comes out, you're speaking it. A religious dance, you're dancing it. A form of godliness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, intercessors. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Glory be to God. Let's go. Spirit number three. Hallelujah. Spirit number three. The final spirit that is assigned. The one that the Lord spoke to me on. There are many demonic powers against the church in this last hour. I'm just touching on three as the Lord instructed me to. And I know many of you are coming on and you're watching the replay. May grace come upon you to hear the word of the Lord. We are so caught up in all sorts of uh, ills in our nation and in our churches. But the Lord is saying, if you're an end time harvester, hear the word of the Lord. All right, I'm getting ready to pray in just a little while. Spirit number three, demonic power assigned to attack the end time church. And this is, a, this, is, this is it right here. It's the spirit, the spirit of perverted preaching and prophecy. It's the spirit of perverted Preaching and prophecy. Let's go to the word of God. Let me give you scripture for that family. You see, we love, we love to, to run after prophets, false prophets. But we are in the last days. There are many false prophets assigned to churches, to oversee churches. They are assigned to the bundles of tears family. They are collecting bodies 
in the house of the Lord. Their preaching is false. Their prophecies are false. Their lifestyle is false. Their character is false. The only thing that is true is the giftings. Because the gifts are without repentance. And yes, the giftings are true. But because they are false and their character is false and their heart is wicked and they have rebelled against the Lord, even the work that they do in the name of the Lord have become false. Revelation 16. Let me give you the word of the Lord concerning this last spirit that is assigned to infiltrate the end time churches that are assigned to revival. 16 and uh, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world we love prophets we love false prophets well, there's an unclean spirit coming out of the mouth of the false prophet in this hour. And it's the spirit of the frog. What does the frog mean? It represents the spirit of perversion. It represents the spirit of perversion that has been released in our churches to contaminate the body of Christ. Man of God, if you've got a revival church, you've got to guard your pulpits. Woman of God, if you are called to the end time harvest, you've got to guard your pulpits against the false prophets of the land. You see, nobody likes this kind of teaching. Nobody wants to hear this kind of word. I know you wanted a word to jump and dance and shout, and I do all of that. I give all of that. But that's not this program tonight. This program is designed to awaken the nations and to awaken your spirit to the reality of the times that we're living in. Take it with a pinch of salt and sober up now. And so we got the false prophet. We got the false prophet moving through the nations of the world and he's carrying the frog spirit. He's carrying the spirit of perversion in his mouth. Or even her mouth. Because we got male prophets, we got female prophets. And so wherever they go, when they open their mouth, a spirit of perversion comes out. I know you don't like that word right there because you love prophetic words. We love prophecies, right? We don't know, we don't know what God is saying to us. We, we always want a prophetic word. Family of God, listen. Listen to the voice of the Lord tonight. If you've never listened to another preacher, you've got to watch for the false prophet that is speaking lies and hypocrisy in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a spirit of perversion that is coming out and leaking in our nation churches. And now, guess what? The enemy has made it so easy. It's easy now. You got all these overnight wonders springing up on social media and preaching. They're just releasing words. And every word they release, some of us are saying, Amen, I receive. Amen, I take that. I receive. Well, you keep receiving because you're coming into covenant with Satan and satanic power. May you be delivered from every satanic power and covenant in the name of Jesus. May every satanic covenant that you put yourself and are yoked to, may it be broken off your life in the name of Jesus. Family of God, you've got to wake up. You've got to wake up. That's why the word of God says, do not have itching ears running to and fro with every wind of doctrine because the false prophets 
They are here. They're not coming. They are here. They are on this earth. And they are Satan's elite. And they are assigned to churches. They are assigned to families. They are assigned to regions. They are assigned to conferences. They are assigned to nations. Family of God, you better wake up and understand that we're living in the last hour and in the last days. And the false prophets are infiltrating the house of God. Wake up, people of God. For the spirit of perversion is coming out. The spirit of the frog is coming out of the mouth of false prophets. I thank God for the true men and women of God that the Lord has allowed us to lock shields with. And when, I, when God puts us in covenant with true men and women of God, we are not hurried to go looking here and there and everywhere for anybody else to mount our platform. Covenant is important. God chooses the people for you, for your ministries to covenant with. And when you covenant and you come into covenant, you honor covenant. You grow, you begin to grow, and you know people. You, you begin to understand their spirit and the way they think and the trials they go through, the tribulations they go through. You get to know their heart. You're able to pray them through. You're able to stand with them. They're able to pray me through. They're able to stand with me. And so covenant is important, family of God. You don't go here, there, and everywhere looking for people to mount your platform. You just met someone, and you're ready to put them on a platform. No, family of God, we can't do that. We can do that. Anyone can use Christian tools to do miracles, to do healings, to do signs, to do wonders. But not anyone can walk the Christian walk. And so family, you see, the, the third spirit, the third spirit that is infiltrating our last day's church, the church that is assigned to revival. It is the spirit of the frog, the spirit of perversion, the unclean spirit. Can sweet water and bitter water come out of the same fountain? Never, family. Never. Never, family. It can never work. It can never happen. If you're in perversion, if you're in perversion one day and then the next day you're preaching righteousness and holiness, no, that can never work, family. It can never work. Sweet water and bitter water cannot come out of the same fountain. And so you gotta watch that spirit. You gotta watch that spirit. You got to watch that spirit because that spirit is after the sons and daughters of God. That spirit is after our nation's churches and pastors and ministers. That spirit is after the true end time harvesters to bite them and to contaminate them with the poison of perversion. Wake up people of God. I began this program by telling you five months. We got five months to put our houses in order. Five months. Because God wants to use you as an end time harvester. And five is the number of grace. And God is releasing grace to the house this evening. Grace to the church this evening. Grace to the nations of the world this evening. Five months. Five months to put your house in order. Five months to put your deacon board in order. Five months to put your worshipers in order. Five months to put your ministers in order. Five months. I'm talking to pastors and shepherds now. Now intercessors. Five months. You've got five months of grace to pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. And begin to walk in the righteous ways of God. Because God wants to use you. He wants to use you in the earth, but he cannot use you in that unrepented state. He cannot use you with spirits of perversion attached to your body. He cannot use you if you're in covenant with false prophets. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot, because you will contaminate the harvest. You will contaminate the harvest. And so family of God, I want you to wake up now and hear the voice of this preacher. If you have never heard anyone Speak this word to you. Hear me tonight. 
five months. Five months to begin to sever, disconnect, uproot, pull up, dismantle anything that does not belong in your life. Five months. Some of you need to go on to 21 days of prayer and fasting because you've got soul ties to demonic prophets. You need to break those soul ties. You got soul ties to false apostles. God wants to break those soul ties. You've got soul ties to false pastors. God says 21 days of prayer and fasting is all you need. And that evil covenant and soul tie will be broken off your life. I'm talking to the people of God tonight. I'm talking to the people of God who understand the heart of God and the mind of God for the last day's harvest. God is not playing games with his harvest family of God. We might be playing games, but God is not playing games. He will have a church that is walking uprightly. He will have a people that is walking soberly and circumspectly before the Lord. He will have a people that are living against the standard of this world and not our own standard. We can never measure ourselves by ourselves. We measure ourselves by the word of God. Family of God, I want you to hear me like you have never heard any preacher tonight. Unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto the evil man, all things are evil. May your heart be pure tonight to hear the word of God. May your spirit be pure tonight to understand the mind of God. You know what the word of God says? Apostle Paul said that we are to preach the whole counsel of God. And so I know many of you all love all the great preaching and all of that. And we do that. We have a good old time at the prayer tower. But you got to get sober, sober truth now. You got to get salt from time to time in its raw state to season our unrepented hearts. Preach the whole counsel of God. Listen, family, I want to share something with you. There are some of us, some churches, we just go really too far on the grace message. We, we go real far, real far, and everything is grace, 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 with no truth, no conviction of sin, no rebuke to live right, Fornication is happening in the church, in the, in the church board, on the church choirs, in the ushers, in the greeters. My God, we just go real far. I wrote something down for you. When you take one factor of truth and you stretch it out too far, trying to build on one block, you run into spiritual error. And so, family of God, Apostle Paul said, preach the whole truth. Preach the whole truth. Preach the whole truth. The whole truth must be preached. The whole truth, family of God. The whole truth must be preached. The reaper angels are in the field, family. They are bundling wheat for the barn and tears for the burning. Hallelujah. Family of God, I want us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up and to understand that Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's coming back for a church that is ready. He's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. Some of us can't say amen tonight. But that's all right. You need salt. You got lots of salt here. I want you to live right. I want you to examine your life. I want you to take a stop of your life and do self-examination now. We're not playing church. We are called to be the church. We are called to be the bride of Messiah. And Jesus is saying it's time to repent and it's time to put 
our houses in order for Jesus is coming soon and so many souls are dying and going to a hopeless eternity. They are dying and going to a hopeless eternity. Family of God, our souls are in trouble. Hear the word of the Lord. Our souls are in trouble. Our souls are in trouble. While we are playing church, our souls are in trouble. The souls of our sons and daughters, it's in trouble. The souls of the members of our churches are in trouble. Our souls are in trouble. And we're playing church. Our souls, our souls are in trouble. Wake up, church. It's time to wake up and stop playing games with God. Our souls are in trouble. Every second, eight people die. And where are they going? Where are they going? Our souls are in trouble. Trinidad and Tobago, your soul is in trouble. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and hear the voice of God. Our soul is in trouble. We got to wake up. We got to stop playing games. We got to pray. Our souls are in trouble. God is saying your soul, your soul, it's all about your soul. Satan is fighting to take your soul. Our souls are in trouble. Lord, may we be delivered tonight. May we be delivered, God. May we be delivered. May sons and daughters be delivered. May mothers and fathers be delivered. May pastors be delivered. May deacons be delivered. Our souls are in trouble, oh God. Send help, Lord. Send angels, God. Oh God, help us tonight, Lord. Our souls, our souls, our souls. Our souls are in trouble. Our souls, our souls, family of God, it's not about your church, it's not about my church. King Solomon, the most wisest man that lived, he said, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. And so we got pastors and ministers and people in the body of Christ going competition. What is all this foolery all about competition and your church and my church? Jesus Christ is coming back for one church. And that's a church without spot and without wrinkle. Family of God, hear the word of the Lord this morning. Vanity, vanity. It's all vanity. When we die, we are think, taking nothing with us. The only thing that will stand for us on the day of judgment is the work that we did for the Father. May the Lord hear us. May the Lord give us grace to put our houses in order. Hallelujah. I'm going to close off at this time, family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you, people of God. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. I anoint you tonight from the crown of your head, even unto the soles of your feet. Fresh oil comes upon you tonight. Mighty God, let grace be released upon the hearers of this word. That we would heed the warning and we would wake up and become effective in reaping the last day's harvest. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you, everyone.